Now, usually, when we start a closer look, we tell you at the top which news stories we're about to cover. Obviously, we have a bit more than usual to catch up on today, so just bear with me while I try to get through this. <laughs> Donald Trump appeared in the Manhattan courthouse today for a fraud trial after a judge ruled that he and his family had lied about their business assets for years. House Republicans descended to chaos and finger pointing after nearly shutting down the government while simultaneously embarrassing themselves with a sham impeachment inquiry into Joe Biden that even their own witnesses admitted did not have any evidence. Florida Congressman Matt Gates announced that he'll try to remove Kevin McCarthy as Speaker of the House. Trump is preparing for another hearing over a proposed gag order to stop him from making threats in the run up to a criminal trial. Attempt is coup. Trial dates have been set in three of Trump's criminal cases for stealing classified documents, trying to overturn the election, and paying hush money to a porn star. Trump was caught on tape admitting they had secret military documents that were not declassified, kept box of classified documents in his bathroom. He was found liable for sexual abuse in a civil trial, called the former chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff to be executed, reneged on a promise to pay his ex lawyer Rudy Giuliani, who was also indicted by a grand jury in Atlanta for election interference, and is being sued by his ex lawyer for failure to pay, as well as by Hunter Biden for tampering with his laptop. Trump was overheard saying the words hang on January 6th as a riotous mob tried to hang his vice president. Rudy was drunk during the insurrection. Trump chief of staff Mark Meadows burned so many documents in his fireplace that his suit smelled like a Boy Scout jamboree. Ted Cruz said Barbie <laughs> is indoctrinating children with Chinese propaganda. The Atlanta grand jury recommended an indictment of Lindsey Graham, among many other Trump allies. Trump's former doctor turned congressman Ronnie Jackson got detained at a rodeo. <laughs> Trump said windmills are killing whales and the dampening forest fires with water would stop fires. Chris Christie called him Donald Trump. Marjorie Taylor Greene showed off a giant poster board with Hunter Biden nudes in Congress and confused Yom Kippur with Hanukkah. Congressman George Santos and Senator Bob and were both indicted. Mike Lindell got mad in the lawsuit because someone called his pillows lumpy and Lauren Boebert got to second base at a Beetlejuice musical. Did... <laughs> Did I miss anything? Trump went to a gun store and held a Glock like he was a Price is Right model. <laughs> for more on as much of that as we can get to, it's time for a closer look. <laughs> to the max! To the max! Donald Trump arrived in New York last night to stay at his possibly soon to be renamed residence Trump Tower ahead of his appearance today at a Manhattan courthouse for fraud trial. And I just want to say it's really nice of him to come back to New York for our first show. He, <laughs> he heard the strike was over and said, I can't miss a closer look. <laughs> in fact, this is very exciting. He's in the audience with us right now. So if you're in the studio and you hear a beeping sound, don't worry, that's just his court ordered ankle bracelet going off. <laughs> I'm just kidding, Trump's not here. He's home recuperating after a long day of scowling. Here he is arriving <laughs> at the courthouse for the fraud trial today and standing there waiting to go in like a guy waiting to use the bathroom at a concert. <laughs> Come on, hurry up. I want to get back to my seats before he plays Piano Man. Where is he now? <laughs> Davy Crockett, Peter Pan, Elvis Presley, Disneyland. All right, I got time. And then, of course, he could not restrain himself from launching into an unhinged tirade for the assembled press, where he, among other things, attacked the attorney general who brought the case and the judge overseeing it. I don't want to amplify most of what he said, but here's a quick time lapse just to give you an idea of what fraud defendant Donald Trump was doing as he waited to enter the courtroom. This is a continuation of the single greatest witch hunt of all time. She said, well, now I'll go back to get Trump again. And this is what we have. It's a scam. It's a sham. People are being murdered all over the sidewalks of New York. If I didn't run, I'd be sitting right now at a beach like Biden does every time, even though he's supposed to be working. They have one property that's worth anywhere from 50 to 100 times what this judge put down as a value. Coca-Cola, take a look at their value. They have a value. The value of their brand is more than everything else put together. One other thing. We have a clause in the contract which tells, essentially, buyer beware. When you take a look at the financial statement, don't believe anything you read. Do not believe anything. If I weren't running, I wouldn't have any of these cases. I wouldn't be seeing you this morning. But I'll be seeing a lot of you. I'll be seeing a lot of you? He sounds like a creepy husband from a Lifetime movie. I'll be seeing a lot of you, Deborah. You'll never find all the cameras I installed. By the way, that was time lapse. That was three days. He started Friday during the rainstorm and hasn't stopped. At one point, the water was up to his waist and he still kept going. Also, generally speaking, I would say it's not exactly a genius legal strategy to attack the judge right before you walk into his courtroom. This guy's an ass. 
a loser, I hate his guts, and I hope he rules in my favor. <laughs> Most of that rant was the standard Trump word vomit, but I do want to touch on a few quick things like this. The reason I got indicted was that I ran. If I didn't run, I'd be sitting right now at a beach like Biden does every time, even though he's supposed to be working. Yeah, I just can't imagine Donald Trump sitting on a beach. A beach implies relaxation. If Trump ever did go to a beach, he'd spend the entire time arguing with the seagulls. Excuse me, Mr. Seagull. Mr. Se those are my chips. Excuse me, I'm talking. <laughs> squawk, 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 squawk to you. Excuse me. But arguably the most bizarre thing he said during his rant was when he claimed he couldn't be held liable for any of the false statements about his business assets because his financial documents have a disclaimer in them that says nothing in them is true. We have a clause in the contract which tells, essentially, buyer beware. We have a clause in the contract. It's like a buyer beware clause. It says when you take a look at the financial statement, don't believe anything you read. This is up front. Don't believe anything you read. Some people call it a worthless clause because it makes the statement and anything you read in the statement worthless. It says go out and do your own research. Go out and do your own due diligence. You have to study the statement carefully. Do not believe anything. Wait, what? You, you can't be held liable because your business records have a disclaimer that says don't believe any of this? He's talking about his bank records like it's the warning before an episode of Jackass. <laughs> Do his tax returns also say, don't try this at home? <laughs> so then after he spent a few minutes further incriminating himself, Trump entered the courtroom where he sat down at the defense table and as you can see from these images, he's having a blast. <laughs> Generally speaking, if you're an alleged criminal trying to look innocent at a fraud trial, I would not go with menacing scowl. If you didn't know the context and just saw his face, you'd think he was on trial for all the murders. <laughs> That's his audition tape to play a Klingon general. <laughs> but I have to say, the scene that I found especially incredible was this shot of Attorney General Letitia James, perfectly positioned in the background <laughs> over Trump's shoulder staring at, look at that shot! What cinematography? Did they get the same director who did Succession? <laughs> the only thing... Wonderful. The only thing missing from this scene was cousin Greg. What's Trump saying in the courtroom, Greg? Uh, I think he's uh, suggesting that uh, perhaps in terms of the uh, uh, jurisprudence the, uh, of the uh, uh, legal uh, proceedings that he's um, uh, completely <laughs> Now, in a way, Trump has already lost this case before he stepped foot in the courtroom because last week before the trial even began, the judge found Trump had lied about his business assets for years and now, the attorney general is asking the judge to bar him from doing business in New York, which means Trump could lose everything. We begin with a major ruling in a civil case against Donald Trump and his family business. In a 35-page decision yesterday, Manhattan Judge Arthur Ngoran found the former president and his two oldest sons and their companies liable for fraud. The judge found Trump, quote, repeatedly submitted fraudulent financial documents about the value of his assets to banks and other insurance companies, and that his financial statements were, quote, based in a fantasy world, not the real world. The attorney general's team sought to convince the judge in this case that Trump should be barred from doing business in the state of New York. The former president could eventually lose control of iconic properties like Trump Tower. Is it clear, does he have $250 million if that was a, an actual penalty that, that the company was to pay? I'm not sure how liquid he is at the moment and whether he could pay that, but this is obviously a big question, is what his actual assets are. That's right, Trump might not even have the money to pay the penalty in his fraud trial, which means there's a remote but realistic possibility that Trump Tower gets taken away, he has to sell Mar-a-Lago, and he ends up crashing with Rudy Giuliani. <laughs> I call Tab Bunk. But boss, I don't have a bunk bed. You can sleep under the mattress. Oh, this is great! <laughs> Maybe this will finally straighten out my neck. My chiropractor says I have a condition called gargoyle spine. So the actual trial began today. Trump and his lopsided adult sons are on the witness list, but <laughs> the judge in the case has already effectively ruled that the facts are not in dispute. He wrote in his ruling that Trump's inflated claims about his business assets constitute obvious fraud. The judge effectively decided he didn't need a trial to determine 
the Trumps were liable. The judge wrote in his ruling, quote, this is a fantasy world, not the real world, and admonished the former president for his overvaluing his holdings by as much as $2.2 billion. In one example, Trump overestimated the size of his Manhattan apartment, which he spent years living in, by 19,000 feet or 200%. Judge Ngoran called that absurd, writing, quote, a discrepancy of this order of magnitude by a real estate developer sizing up his own living space of decades can only be considered fraud. Trump inflated his own apartment size by 200%. In other words, he tripled it. I wouldn't be surprised if the photos were fake, too. Remember how we all thought it looked like this? That's Photoshop. If you remove the filter, it looks like this. <laughs> this ruling undercuts his entire mythology, everything about him is a lie. Not only were his businesses and net worth inflated, but he even pretended his own apartment was three times bigger than it actually was. Next, we're gonna find out he and Melania are just friends. I'm kidding, friends like each other. And yet somehow, <laughs> this fraud trial could very well, very well be the least of Trump's concerns. As we all know, he's got four upcoming criminal cases to deal with, and trial dates have been set for three of those cases. We'll tell you all about that right after this break. Wait, we're allowed to do a commercial during a closer look? Is that a new thing? All right, let's see how it goes. Now, as I was saying, before I was so rudely interrupted by our incredibly valuable advertisers, thank you so much. On top of the civil fraud trial Trump appeared at today in Manhattan, he's also, of course, facing four indictments, three more, it should be noted, than the Unabomber, who, as the Una implies, had just the one. <laughs> one of Trump's indictments, of course, involves the classified documents he stole from the White House. And at the House GOP's sham impeachment hearing into Joe Biden last week, Congresswoman Jasmine Crockett compared the stolen documents, some of which were found in Trump's bathroom, to the allegations against Biden with an especially memorable choice of words. As I walked in to this chamber today, as I prepared, I said, what is the crime? Because when you're talking about impeachment, you're talking about high crimes or misdemeanors. And I, I can't seem to find the crime. And honestly, no one has testified of what crime they believe the president of the United States has committed. But when we start talking about things that look like evidence, they want to act like they blind. They don't know what this is. These are our national secrets. Looks like in the <laughs> to me. Yep. Much like the country, when he was in office, Trump left his classified documents in the And I really appreciate that choice of words because it accurately captures the decor of Trump's bathroom. It doesn't look like a powder room or a laboratory. It looks like a fancy but it's a nonetheless. I mean, put aside the fact that there are boxes of stolen classified documents in there. You know, just in case you run out of golf digests or family circuses, he's got a fancy chandelier right next to a cheap curtain rod. I don't... I think I've ever seen a weirder combination of expensive and chintzy choices in a bathroom before. It's like a porta potty with monogram towels. <laughs> if you're gonna lay out for the chandelier, why not just get a proper shower installed or a sliding glass door or something? This looks like the bathroom at a funeral home in Yonkers. And by the way, you know Trump calls it the <laughs> too. Like when he's on his private jet with his gang of weirdos complaining about the bathroom being occupied. Where's Rudy? He's still in the sir. <laughs> Sometimes he breathes in too much hair dye and passes out in there. <laughs> Boss, it happened again. I had the craziest dream where I was the president's lawyer. I am! <laughs> and while we're on the subject, you might be wondering how Republicans could have possibly defended this. Here's soon-to-be former House Speaker Kevin McCarthy <laughs> offering a defense of Trump's bathroom slash filing cabinet back in June. Is that a good look for the former president to have boxes in a bathroom? I don't know, is it a good picture to have boxes in a garage that opens up all the time? A bathroom door locks. Yeah, bathroom... <laughs> bathroom doors lock so you can pee in private, not so you can use it a, as a home safe. <laughs> also, the bathroom door kind of famously has the flimsiest lock in the house. If you're watching a horror movie and a character runs into the bathroom and locks the door, say your goodbyes. There <laughs> isn't a single normal human being who keeps important things in the bathroom. Hey, honey, where's our marriage certificate? It's next to the plunger. Also, a bathroom door only locks from the inside. If no one's in there, it's open. So <laughs> what you're saying is our nation's most sensitive and highly guarded secrets are safe as long as someone's in there taking a dump. Do we assign someone from the archives department to that job? Or is 
That more of a Secret Service thing. Agent Callahan, your bathroom shift starts at 5 a.m. Better, better start pounding some bran. So the faraway frontrunner for the GOP nomination is facing four indictments and civil fraud case that could end his entire business. But fair is fair, and I do want to give the Republican Party credit. I'm happy to report that in the five months since we were last on the air, the GOP has undergone a radical transformation into a serious, sober-minded collection of diligent professionals capable of competently administering the basic functions of government. And I'm just kidding, it's still a giant ass over tea kettle cluster. This is CNN Breaking News. Good evening, everyone. This is CNN's special live coverage on a chaotic night, even by Washington standards. I'm Dana Bash, live in the nation's capital. Here's the headline. The United States government will not shut down, at least not for another 45 days. The House Speaker uh, had his back up against the wall, it seems. He was not going to get anywhere with his Republican conference alone. They were, there was just too much infighting going, going on inside the conference. And so he had to work with Democrats to get this done here. This all comes, Jake, as the tension was palpable among some of the Republicans. The fate of House Speaker Kevin McCarthy is uncertain at this time, as hardliners in his party are pushing for his ouster. Do you, Do you still the Ukraine support him said that Speaker? I have my questions. I have my doubts. We cannot blame the Democrats for having not done our job. This is a huge mess. I've been frustrated by the process. I thought we would be better than this. Yeah, we're Republicans. We're supposed to be better than this. We're the party of serious statesmen, like Rudy Giuliani, Marjorie Taylor Greene, Mike Lindell, and the lady who got horned up at the Beetlejuice musical. Seriously. <laughs> Republicans, why? Did you think you would be better than this? Did you forget the entire Trump presidency? And if so, can you send me some of the pills that helped you do that? <laughs> You're like a Jets fan saying, I think this is our year after Aaron Rodgers went down. <laughs> so Republicans basically caused a bunch of pointless chaos and paralysis, pushing us to the brink of a shutdown that would imperil millions of Americans, paychecks, and jobs. And in the end, they had to be bailed out by Democrats who supplied most of the votes to keep the government open. And now, because of that, GOP hardliner Matt Gates, McCarthy's chief antagonist in the GOP caucus, is threatening to stir up even more chaos by filing a motion to remove McCarthy as speaker. The future of Kevin McCarthy's speakership is in peril after he teamed up with Democrats to avert a government shutdown. Well, this morning, Congressman Matt Gates says that he is moving forward with a motion to vacate to try to oust McCarthy as speaker. I do intend to file a motion to vacate against Speaker McCarthy this week. He uh, says he's coming for you. Can you survive? Yes, I'll survive. Oof, that's the worst Gloria Gaynor cover I've ever heard. <laughs> Gates versus McCarthy is a real alien versus predator situation. In fact, Gates and the alien have the same size forehead, so that's pretty cool. <laughs> so the result, keeping the government open, must have been a relief for millions of Americans, including Joe Biden. Although I will say, if the government had shut down, I was kind of hoping Biden would follow the late night host lead and start a podcast with the other living presidents called Air Force Five. <laughs> Today's episode. Today's episode is brought to you by Manscaped, the world leader in male grooming. Uh, Manscaped delivers uh, peak performance for your most uh, sensitive areas. I feel your pain when you use inferior grooming tools. America. America, I'm 99 years old and I still use this product every day. Go to manscaped.com today. <laughs> Use promo code Bush. <laughs> For 20% off your man Bush. Thank you. Five. Five months an impression camp paid off. We did one president a month, obviously. <laughs> Got a little rushed on Carter month. Republicans spent weeks devouring each other and self-immolating to the point that they couldn't be bothered to keep the government open until Democrats bailed them out. And that's because they were focused on an even more embarrassing spectacle, an impeachment hearing into Joe Biden, where even Republicans admitted they humiliated themselves. We'll show you some of the lowlights right after this. So, as we told you before the break, Republicans could barely be bothered to keep the government open and had to turn to the Democrats to bail them out. Now, you might be asking yourself, what could have possibly been more important than keeping the government functioning. What else 
was the GOP focused on? The House GOP is focused on Hunter Biden, spending this entire Thursday morning and afternoon, again, just two days before the government shuts down on Saturday, to open their impeachment inquiry into his dad, the president. They're looking into Hunter Biden as well. Even some Republicans this morning are privately grumbling about how that first impeachment hearing went. No bombshells, no direct evidence that President Biden did anything wrong. I want to emphasize what it is that we're here today for. This is a question of an impeachment inquiry. It is not a vote on articles of impeachment. In fact, I do not believe that the current evidence would support articles of impeachment. What, that's your first witness? <laughs> he just came out and all over your whole case. That's like if the best man at your wedding got up to give a toast and said, hey, everybody, keep your gift receipts. This one ain't making it through the summer. <laughs> And I'm not the only one who was underwhelmed by the witness choice. Even pro-Trump hardliner Steve Bannon was critical of the GOP's decision to call, as their first impeachment witness, someone who doesn't think there's enough evidence for impeachment. That's maybe not a witness I call initially to lay out the case. And if that was the professor's thought and that's what he believes, maybe we sit around a conference table and say, hey, when we have on the whiteboard that professor's name, why don't we put him on the maybe category? Why don't we, maybe we bring him in in a couple weeks. Maybe we don't start with him. It's just an idea. Wow, you know it's bad when even Steve Bannon is sassing you for screwing up. This is a guy who got canned after six months in the White House, got indicted twi twice, got sentenced to four months in prison for contempt of Congress, and can't decide which collared shirt to wear, so it just goes with all of the above. <laughs> Fun fact, to raise bail money, he's been starring in that Beetlejuice production Lauren Boebert was at. <laughs> and by the way, the GOP star witness is not the only one to admit they don't have any evidence. A number of House Republicans have already said the same thing. I have not seen any evidence that links uh, President Biden to Hunter Biden's activities at this point. I actually wrote down right here some other Republican congressmen who have said similar things. Quote, Dave Joyce, not seeing any facts or evidence. Don Bacon, quote, there should be a direct link to the president in some evidence. Dusty Johnson of South Dakota, I've not seen that evidence. So this is a widespread belief among the House Republican conference. We don't have the evidence now, but we may find it later. They really said, we don't have it now, but we may find it later. He sounds like a spirit employee telling you they lost your luggage. We don't have it right now, but we may find it at the bottom of the Atlantic Ocean in 30 years. Do you want us to call you? That should tell you everything you need to know. If they had any evidence connecting Joe Biden to improper foreign business dealings, they surely would have presented it in their first impeachment hearing, but they don't. Why are they doing this? Simple, it's for political revenge for the twice impeached Donald Trump. And if you don't believe me, just take it from Trump himself. They did it to me, and had they not done it to me, I think, and nobody officially said this, but I think had they not done it to me, then I'm very popular in the region. They like me and I like them, the Republican Party. Uh, perhaps you wouldn't have it being done to them. And this is going to happen with indictments, too. Had they not done it to me, you wouldn't have it being done to them. As usual, all you really need to do is stick a microphone in front of Trump's face and he'll confess. He's the world's most notorious pathological liar, and yet he also just blurts out the truth like he's on his way home from the dentist. Mom, did you know Dad has a friend named Kathy? Because he says, he says it's a secret. <laughs> So Republicans are running interference for Trump by pursuing pointless political revenge against Biden. But Trump, of course, is not the only member of his inner circle facing serious criminal or financial penalties. Trump's ex-lawyer and co-defendant Rudy Giuliani was sued by his ex-lawyer and Mike Lindell, melted down in deposition over his election lies. We'll show you that video right after this. As we've discussed on this show many times, the ironclad rule of Trumpism is that devoting yourself to this criminal weirdo will always, without fail, end in humiliation. And there is, of course, no better example of that than Rudy Giuliani, seen here accidentally getting his <laughs> caught in a zipper. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. The way Rudy wears his pants, he's much more likely to get his nipple caught in a zipper. <laughs> Rudy was in high demand at the impeachment hearing last week, where Democrats kept demanding to know why he hadn't been called as a witness, given that he was a key player in Trump's scheme to dig up dirt on the Bidens. We must receive the testimony of Rudy Giuliani and Lev Parnas, the insiders who know the origins of the lie upon which this sham impeachment is based and who work to spread it. I reclaim my time, and I ask the question, where in the world is Rudy Giuliani? <laughs> Where in the world is Rudy Giuliani? Sounds like a game show where kids would have to guess where Rudy was based on where you told him to be. 
All right, gumshoes, you tell Rudy Giuliani to meet you at the Best Western. Where is he going to turn up? At a screening of Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid. <laughs> Correct. He would think that is the Best Western. Also, that piece of paper that says, where is Rudy, looks like something a limo driver would hold up at the airport. <laughs> Rudy is, of course, a figure in all of Trump's various schemes and spent a lot of money helping him. He flew around the country on his own dime and bought hair dye by the barrel just to try to sway state lawmakers to overturn the election results for Trump. And now, not only has he been indicted for that, he's also out of cash. Things are reportedly so bad, Rudy reportedly pleaded with Trump to pay him. And you'll never guess how that turned out. Some exclusive new reporting on the hundreds of thousands of dollars in legal fees that Rudy Giuliani is now staring down and the desperate attempts that he has made to get former President Donald Trump to cover them. With his attorney in tow, I am told that Rudy Giuliani traveled to Mar-a-Lago in late April on a mission to make a personal appeal to Trump to pay his legal bills. But apparently it fell on deaf ears. Trump is notoriously strict about digging into his own coffers. He did not seem very interested, I'm told, in covering everything that Giuliani and Costello wanted. One source says that he verbally agreed to help, but he didn't commit to any specific amount or timeline. I love that Trump shooed Rudy away by saying he'd help, but wouldn't commit to an amount or a timeline. So no? <laughs> the answer was no. What was Trump's excuse? Sorry, Rudy, I can't even afford a real shower rod in my <laughs> And in a truly wonderful turn of events, Rudy is now himself being sued by his own ex-lawyer for failure to pay his legal bills. Rudy Giuliani is being sued by his former attorneys. The law firm that represented the former New York City mayor says he owes them more than $1.3 million in unpaid legal fees. So Donald Trump's ex-lawyer, who has unpaid legal bills, is being sued by his ex-lawyer for unpaid legal bills, which is a reminder only Trump can pull off being Trump. Trump's lawyer comes to him asking for money he's owed. Trump makes up some bull sends him away empty-handed, and the lawyer's like, oh, well, at least I tried. Then that same lawyer, tries that same move with his legal representation, and they're like, F you, pay me. <laughs> but what if I verbally agree to pay you without a specific amount or timeline? F you, pay me, I swear! <laughs> this just worked on me like a day ago! <laughs> and Rudy's not the only Trump crony facing serious financial consequences. There's also my pillow CEO, Mike Lindell, who's being sued for his own part in spreading election lies. And all of this has clearly taken a toll on Lindell, as evidenced by video released from a deposition in which he was grilled about his election lies and lost what was left of his mind. Tell us your full name, please. Michael James Lindell. Well, good morning, Mr. Lindell. My name is Charlie Kane. We met for the first time about... Who's paying you? About four minutes ago. Okay, go on. Is that right? What's it? Is that right? Is what, what was the question? We met for the first time. Yes, yes. You're an ambulance chief and lawyer, so don't start with me. I got all day. I'll take as much time as you want. The question is, do people know you as the My Pillow guy? Blah blah blah. I just gave my answer. How dare him come and sue My Pillow? He's a scumbag for doing that. Put that in there. Scumbag. S C U M bag. Does he not know how to spell the word bag? I'd love to see him play Wheel of Fortune. Pat, I'd like to buy an E, please. Uh, I'm sorry, your turn is up. No, please, Pat, I need this. Just give me the money. I'm being sued by a bunch of bad people for saying weird things. You don't even need to let me win the game. Just take the money for the Hawaiian vacation and put it in the bag. Oh, wait, that's the word, darn it. It's not my turn. Please, I need the cash. Just let me skip ahead and solve the puzzle. Show me Hugo Chavez. Uh, But the best part, the best part of that deposition video came when the lawyer alluded to complaints about Lindell's pillows using a word that really set him off. I'm not asking about the lumpy pillow calls. Uh, no, they're not lumpy pillows. That's not what they call on, okay? That when you say lumpy pillows, now you're an ass You got that? You're an ass like is what you are. Like no, he's an ass no, He's an ambulance chasing ass That's what you are. Lumpy pillows kiss my ass. Obviously, you don't have a my pillow, too. You don't, do you? What I'm saying is, Mr. Lindell. Ass. The phrase lumpy pillows is such a funny thing to fly off the handle over because even as an insult, it's pretty tame. It sounds like Minnesota slang for testicles. Honey, I was watching C SPAN the other day, and Marjorie Taylor Greene showed a picture of Hunter Biden's lumpy pillows. <laughs> Not to mention his Paul Bunyan. 
I will say Lindell could probably generate a lot more business if his ads had that much bleeping. I personally <laughs> my will be the most <laughs> you'll ever or your This is the Republican Party, and in the five months we were off the air, it hasn't changed. Arguably, it's gotten worse. It's a collection of aspiring despots and weirdos doing everything in their power to insulate an alleged criminal who instigated a coup from accountability. Donald Trump's place in the GOP is kind of like a ass in the You still got it. This has been a closer look.